gown correctly. You need to have clean gowns and towels placed over your client with a plastic cape also to protect their clothing. The stylist should have relevant PPE. This is in the form of an apron, gloves, and the option of a mask and a goggles or visor. Currently during COVID-19, the stylist is required to wear these, as is the client is required to wear a mask. As a stylist, always have your trolley set up with all the things that you're gonna need for that service and have that in a position to reduce fatigue and injury to yourself. Now, before any colour can carry, be carried out, there are some fundamental tests that need to be carried out. The first one is a skin test, and this needs to be carried out 48 hours before your service. And to do this, a small piece of colour is applied behind the ear, and the actions that we'd be looking for, which would stop the service from being carried out, would be redness, itching, or irritation of that area. If the client doesn't have a reaction, then you're safe to proceed with your colour. It is the law to do a skin test and everybody has to have a skin test. The other two fundamental tests that you should carry out before all colours, the first one is an elasticity test and this is carried out by taking a damp piece of hair between your thumb and forefinger and you are stretching and seeing if the hair returns to its original length. Now if you stretch the hair and it returns to its original length, this displays that the hair has good elasticity and the internal strength, the cortex of the hair, is in good condition. If you were to stretch the hair and to return it to its original, um, it doesn't return to its original point, this shows that the hair has poor elasticity, so that means the cortex of the hair is in jeopardy. So any colours that you use could cause further damage, particularly if these are colours are alkaline based like permanent or lightness. The second test that you would carry out is a porosity test and this is carried out by running your thumb and forefinger up the hair shaft and you're feeling if the hair feels rough in any areas. Now often towards the ends of the hair the hair could be feel a bit more porous than it does at the root area. Now this is really important when colouring hair because if the hair has poor porosity, that means that area of the hair may absorb the colour much quicker. So that area, part of the hair could take the colour quicker or it could give you an uneven colour result. So to help this, you can apply a porosity leveller to those areas which are damaged or have poor porosity to give you a much more even result. So they're the three key tests that we should carry out before all chemical services. Okay, this morning we're going to have a look at our semi-permanent colour. We're going to have a look at two different ways of applying this morning. We're going to have a look at our bottle application, which I'm going to demonstrate, and then we're going to talk through our bowl and brush application. When we start with our semi-permanent colour, we're going to look at our sectioning pattern, and we will always divide the hair into four quarters. This gives us a much more methodical approach to the colour and application, and it means we can get a clean, even application throughout the hair and we keep a nice tidy workspace. So starting from the front hairline, we're gonna work that right the way down to the nape of the neck, which I'll show you in a second. And we will divide the head in two. You'll see as we get to the nape of the neck there, some of my hair gets quite short, so I'll divide that as I go to apply the colour there. Once the hair is divided into two, we'll then start on our quarters. So from the crown of the hair, we work to the top of the ear. We came our first section through the front. And we twist all of that hair nice and cleanly out of the way away from the face. If the hair is longer you could work it into a small bun so that you haven't got any hair hanging over onto your client's face. Then we work on the opposite side to the other top of the ear. Again, twist that hair out of the way. 
It's really important that you keep clean working practices. This avoids applying colour in places you don't want. It also means you reduce the amount of product that you use. Okay, now you can see I've got my four quarters. Okay. Just in case of any minor drops or spills, I have got a towel on the floor and I've also got a towel on my trolley for me to use should I need to, to give my hands a clean throughout. Starting on this section, first section at the base of the hair, we want to make sure that we take our section directly straight across from the outer edge to the middle and clip that hair nice and tidily out of the way. The semi-permanent colour is quite a runny product, so we need to be really careful when we're using it that we're using a small amount to begin with and if we feel we need more, we can always reapply more to the section. So running the colour across the section of hair, we work through with our fingers and comb through. We then take our second section, about quarter to half an inch, and comb that hair down. It's really important, especially if you're working with longer hair, that you comb that section out nice and cleanly and there's no knots in the hair. If there's knots in the hair, you're not going to get an even application of colour. Now, semi-permanent colour is a direct dye. This means that there is no mixing needed and you apply straight from the bottle so it has no peroxide with it. This means it can uplift the hair, it can only darken and change tone. So comb that section out nice and neat. Apply the colour right across the section. So you can see, hopefully see that there, that it's right across, massage through with your fingers and make sure you're combing right through to ensure that you've evenly spread that colour throughout. Always make sure when you're colouring, doing any colour, that your colour is laid away from your client's face. The last thing we want is to put colour onto the client's face or hair onto the client's face and risk them getting colour stainage on their face or even worse, colour into their eyes. A semi-permanent colour will last for six to eight washes. So when rinsing a semi-permanent colour, we Rinse and condition, we don't apply shampoo because that will reduce one of those washes that we will get out of the length of the colour or the life of the colour. I've started at the back of the hair because this is where the hair is generally darker and most resistant, meaning that we want it to have the maximum amount of time on that hair. The only other time that we might start in another area is if we had a high percentage of white hair. That may be more resistant and that might want them to be started first to give that maximum time. Once you've finished section number one at the back, you'll start on section number two. OK, 
okay as you can see the hair here is getting a bit longer so it requires a bit more combing through before the application of the product to make sure that I'm going to get even coverage. Semi-permanent colour doesn't cover white hair, but it can blend. It's a good introduction to colour because of the length of its life with the eight, six to eight washes. Okay, now this section will comb out of the way before starting on section number two. Again, start at the bottom, combing that hair nice and smooth and then making sure that this hair is cleanly combed out of the way. At this point you'll need to check the time so that you know when you should be rinsing your client's colour off. Really important to make sure that you've recorded your application finish time so that you don't end up over processing colours. Okay. Should you have skin staining, you can start with a piece of damp cotton wool with water on it, work all the way around the front hairline and the nape of the neck. Okay, go right around the hairline to make sure that there's no colour anywhere on the, on the head. Should your cotton wool and water not be enough, then you can use our stain remover with a piece of cotton wool. Make sure that you've still got gloves on. I've cleaned my gloves before picking up my cotton wool with water on to make sure that I don't add more colour onto the scalp. Then with the stain remover on the cotton wool, brush around that hairline to make sure that there's no stain remover, no colour left on the client's head. Then use a dry piece of cotton wool and just go back over so you're not leaving your client with a wet hair loss. Allow the colour to process following manufacturer's instructions. Each manufacturer will have a different set of instructions, so you must make sure that you're reading them each time that you apply the colour. One. Okay, so now we're going to start the removal process of our colour. So we're going to start by testing our water temperature on our wrist to make sure that we're not going to burn the client. Apply a small amount of water over the scalp to be able to emulsify the product. 
This helps to lift the product out of the hair and reduce any staining on the scalp and lift it off of the scalp. Make sure that you're thoroughly emulsifying right the way through to the nape of the neck and round the front hairline. Then we're going to rinse the product until the water runs clear. Cupping our hand around the front hairline to make sure that we don't get any water on our client's face. Once there's no residue and suds left in the hair and the water is running clear, we will apply our conditioner. Today we're using our Vitamino Colour Conditioner. This is an antioxidant conditioner and will help to close the cuticle. As an aftercare advice to your client, you would recommend they use Vitamino Colour Shampoo. We're not using that today because we've shampooed the hair prior to the application of the colour. So apply the product of the conditioner, work a small amount through your hands, right the way through the mid lengths and ends. We don't apply to the roots because this is new hair and it hasn't had the same damage as the ends. Always comb the hair through from the ends to the roots. Section by section. Always a lot easier on your client than it is on a tuition head. And then thoroughly rinse your conditioner. Make sure that you're wearing your PPE, so your gloves and your aprons for the removal of your colour because your skin is still coming into, that, into contact with that colour product. And make sure that your client is still wearing all of their PPE as well. Once the conditioner has been thoroughly rinsed out, Remove any excess water and towel dry.